Hi, my name is Nini and this is Dubai, one of the richest and showiest cities in the Middle East. Classic Cars easily pass rate art, wine and diamond to become the best performing collectible investment. Miguel Llorente, the head of Tomini Classics, will tell us about his passion and about car market in Dubai. Classic cars, they are very expensive habit. What does this car say about its owners? Classic cars have many, many different faces to them. It can be the beautiful design in the outside, it can be the mechanicals on the inside, and it can also be the, the performance. Different areas of a classic car can tell many different things about a person. Very, For example? <laughs> say you're very aggressive. So yes. perhaps you will want to have a car that is it is uh, louder, it is more performance oriented, it's fast, it's powerful, and it makes a statement when it arrives to a place. What inspired you to get into this business? Like, what was your inspiration? I started with classic cars as a matter of necessity. When I was in college, I needed a, a car to, to drive. To the college? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and it, where you end up? Yeah, I started back in college. It's amazing. Uh, and what was your first car that you have driven? Oh, my first car yes. was a 1971 Volvo P1800. Oh, wow. I was about 18, 19 at the time. And everywhere I went, I felt like James Bond. And did this like um, childhood experience or like young experience influence you to get into this business? So, what is the most richest car that you have driven? Like the most Ooh. luxury car? I would say um, a 1939 Alfa Romeo 2500 Super Sport. I think it's one of the most expensive cars that I've driven, and by far. For its time, 1939, it was one of the most luxurious cars that money could buy. It was the personal car of Benito Mussolini, so it had a lot of great history. So you seem as an expert in classic cars, so what advice could you give to the buyer who wants to buy a classic car? What it can be? Well, uh, there are many different types of uh, classic cars. Uh, yes. Every classic car is different, and even within the same manufacturer and the same model, every car, because they're hand-built, they're different. Yes. The biggest recommendation I have is do your research and make sure that you have one-to-one -one time with that car. Um, and you also understand the common problems yes. that afflict these cars. How does it change the market? How was the market before COVID and how it's now? Like, is there many difficulties or it's the same? I think it's not the same, but it will be well, interesting to hear your definitely opinion. changed a lot. A lot of people have come to us wanting to buy these classic cars more so than before, because it is an activity that they can enjoy themselves safely with their families and something that where there's no, no risk. Uh, also because uh, currencies have changed, uh, there's a big uh, resurgence of uh, Bitcoin and a lot of yeah. uh, crypto. Uh, people are looking to put this uh, money into assets where their money is safe. And by the way, you could show us your favorite car here. So this one, for example, this is yes. a a car that we're not selling, even though we're displaying. It is a car that belongs to our chairman. It is one of 60 in the world. Oh, wow. It's a very limited That's edition. We enjoy the cars as much as we enjoy selling them or buying them. So it is a little bit more of a hobby business than it is a, a serious dealership that relies on revenue for, yes. for making a profit. We are a hobby business, but we take it extremely seriously. Seriously, yes, on a high level. So you are never, so for example, you sell this car tomorrow, you won't be sad. <laughs> on this one, if it was to leave a collection, I would be very sad. Sometimes it's, it's almost like I'm raising a child. Yes, yes, I wanted to make this comparison, oh. but then I stopped. So could you tell us some funny story involving the car? Yes, uh, say this car for example. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this is a 1975 Ferrari 308 GT4 Dino. Yeah. Um, the car was modified extensively by the previous owner, a doctor in uh, New Mexico. This was my car of choice at the 2017 Chopard Rally. 
the watch brand Chopard yes. came to Dubai and they organized a, a race. They brought a famous uh, race car driver, Jackie X. We gave a Porsche to Jackie X and the CEO of Chopard. And in the course of two to three days, those were the two to three days that I have found the most rewarding when it comes to any sort of interaction with a car. How many cars do you need to have to be the, the, the one with the most classical cars? Do you know someone that has over 100 models? Yes, uh, we, there's a member of the royal family here in, uh, in UAE who lives uh, between Dubai and Abu Dhabi yes. and has way more than 100 cars. Oh, wow. and, and he keeps them in two buildings. One of them oh, is wow. their <laughs> standard warehouse the other one is sort of his entertainment building. It is similar to this gallery. Yes. Um, he has a pool, he has a, a lounge. So it is a hospitality type of approach. It's almost like welcoming you into his living room. Oh wow, that's amazing. With the time, a lot of people are admiring the scooters. They are even changing their cars and they are driving with the scooters because there's the less traffic jam. It's very comfortable. And I cannot not ask you when I see these amazing scooters all over the wall. I see the Lambretta, like amazing one. And as I guess, it's very rare model and very old model yes. and the, the amazing Ducati so you can tell us something about them. Absolutely uh, we have a lot of very very rare obscure scooters. Yes. Uh, the project started uh, was started by our president. Um, he thought that the showroom was a little bit too serious and too intimidating yes. so we wanted to have a, a decoration piece that would be fun and would be quirky and it would have a splash of color to the showroom uh, just to fill in the, the big expansive white walls that we have. So we went with a, a multiple layout in shelves where we put a lot of the rarest scooters of the 1960s and 1950s. Oh, wow. um, some of them from, come from Austria, some of them come from Italy, some of them come from Germany, and they're all 100% authentic. And which is your favorite one? I really like this one, this red one with the two seats. Yes. And why it's your favorite? That one was created by a fine artist who decided to give up on being a fine artist although he carried his skill and his uh, expertise to building and designing scooters. So he went from pure fine arts to design. Thank you very much for your time and for your experience. It was very interesting and I'm sure that for scooter lovers and car lovers you shared with us amazing information. One of the most confidential building in Dubai, which is amazing, and you will see it further with us. Like closer look with it, and we are with one of the most famous architect <laughs> who created be. all this beauty. So tell us about the interior. Okay, well, when you come in, that's the really important thing. And what we w really wanted to do was you come in, and that's where you hit the wow. Yes. That's where you this immediately. With us. I we can want tell people you. by here. We want people to have fallen in love. <laughs> that's the idea. By and here, that's, that's what happened with me. By like. here, it's marriage, and uh, <laughs> that's it. So it's it's really about space. Yes. For me, luxury is about space. What is the philosophy of your company? It's it's creating that life in a building where people enjoy living Very there, stay. and that's it's something you can't put it in a bottle. You can't create it. You can't. Uh, it is either going to be there or it's not going to be there. So I think it's a combination of the architecture, the interior design, the staff, uh, even things like the smell in the air, everything yeah. comes together to make that experience that the people enjoy. Could you tell me like, about your habit that you value in yourself, that led you in success, that you think that it's the habit that guarantees me the success? I think not chasing money is the first <laughs> priority, really. really. I think that will come if you do something worthwhile money and success will come but if you only chase money i think it's a life i wouldn't want and um, making things that people really enjoy yeah. you will always have customers how do you balance the function with appeal because there, there can be beautiful things that maybe are not functional and they're just yeah. for the beauty yeah. so how do you deal yeah, well, that's very, very important. I think certainly in Dubai, there's a lot of beautiful buildings that look great, but they don't function. Yes. 
Yes. And our approach is designing from the inside out. And the exterior of the building is not our greatest concern. It's how it functions inside, how people live. So you've got to have all those practical things working. Otherwise, it's like having a beautiful car, but it doesn't work. You, know, it's, <laughs> That's it, you, you can't go anywhere in it. You know, so, yeah. Where do you see Dubai in five years? Because I know that you live here. Yeah. For the time you're based here. And what is your prescription for Dubai? Dubai has a plan now, a 2030 plan to grow considerably. And that's, they're looking to bring about 350 people every day for the next 10 years. Everything is here in Dubai, everything. Yes, that's fantastic. It's a place to be, yeah. that's well said. Absolutely. Mm, tell us more about the view. Yeah, well, the view, we designed the building so we can maximize the view of the canal. So. The building is basically a V-shape like this, pointing out, so we get a, a nice long view of the canal this way. That way you get the, the Burj Khalifa view. And uh, as the day passes, the, the, the light changes enormously. And actually you have here the sunset you, yeah. you get from the, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah, it's this great. This is really amazing. It's a very peaceful place. And here is the terrace. Amazing. <laughs> so we, de we designed it so you can have yes. at least 10 people for dinner if you wanted. You can have a party out here. And you can also see here the sunset, which is amazing. Fantas yeah, it's, it's heading down. And you could enjoy the amazing view. The canal. So we built 45 apartments here and we have six left. An yeah. apartment like this sells for 4.7 million US dollars and um, Dubai has got a lot of customers for apartments <laughs> like that, so it's great. Do you have a dream project that you dream, project. That you dream to, to um, have it? I, I always enjoy housing. Building yeah. houses for people is fantastic. Designing houses, I think, is one of the most difficult things because so many things happen in a home. Yes, that's um, true. But to creating this, seeing this go from a piece of sand to what we have to here today, is, uh, it's, we're very proud. We, we love it. We you love can it. be proud because what you do is amazing. Thank you very it's much very, indeed. Very beautiful. And thank you very, very much for your time. You are most welcome and please <laughs> come and see us anytime. We will come yeah. <laughs> because thank we you. enjoyed our stay very, very much. Great. Super.